The Auditor General has given a report saying that uh, it is an unqualified opinion. Therefore, it is good. I want you to clarify to me. Is the Auditor General the only way, as a professional, that you would measure the financial performance of Meru County? I wanted to know, is it budget execution, uh, things like... Um, you know, uh, performance, finishing on the, on, the, on, on the projects and stuff like that, that would amount to uh, good financial performance. And if, if, if so, please answer that question because it, it will help us to make some decisions. I submit, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, proceed, uh, witness, to answer that question. Thank you, uh, Honorable Speaker and members. Yes, uh, budget, uh, uh, budget execution Okay, uh, Auditor General report is not the only way, but it's the surest way, where this one, it, 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 it takes away every doubt, and that is why uh, most of issues relating to financial management, uh, there are recommendations, that there be a special audit, that there be an audit carried out to find out. However, even the budget execution is one way to measure financial performance, and that is why in my, in my response I said, that the controller of budget report on a budget uh, in our budget appropriation or on budget execution, uh, it, it is indicating that we are doing uh, the, the, the county government of Meru is performing well in terms of budget execution at 79 percent. I think that is that is good. Then another one, another indicator of a good uh, financial performance is paying. Like we, we are talking about payment of allowances to doctors. If account is performing poorly financially, we would not be able to pay those allowances. But what we would be seeing is a protest on the roads, uh, doctors protesting for a CBA that was agreed in 2017. Okay. Those are all the requests we had on the board, so we can move to. It's not showing. Uh, Senator Kisang, you can proceed. But uh, his name is not showing on the board. Uh, Clark, check your system. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. I don't know why my name is not showing there and it's on on this side. Madam Speaker, I wanted to put to the witness uh, I don't know whether it's to him or who, because I want to put something on the audited report for 2022-23, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, as a member of CIPIC, I also know as a general case, a member of CIPAC, normally what happens is when the Auditor General signs the report, the oversight committees of both the county assemblies and Senate and National Assembly they go through the reports to verify, and if there are any additional issues that are required, then we recommend to, e to ESCC or other government bodies to investigate. So I'm wondering, I wanted to find out from uh, the witness, were you called by the CIPAC and CIPIC uh, committees of the Counter Assembly of Meru before they met this particular audit query and impeachment issue. Uh, Proceed. Thank you, Honorable Speaker uh, and Honorable Members of the Senate. I want to confirm and say that on the specific of audit 2022-2023, the County Assembly Committee on Public Accounts and Investment has not invited us. That is all for this witness now. Uh, there are no more uh, clarifications from the senators. I hope there's no senator who's been left out. So county assembly can call in the next witness. Sorry, it's the county executive team that is calling in the next witness.
Madam Speaker and Honorable Members, our next witness is Dixon Munene Nkanata. Dixon Munene, where are you? County Executive Team, where is your witness? I, Dixon Monen in Kanata, do solemnly swear that the evidence that I shall give before this Senate in respect of the matters before the Senate shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Madam Speaker, for the record, my name is Edgar Busiega. I've been variously referred to as Busiega. I wish to correct the, the, the record to reflect Busiega. Thank you. you. May proceed, uh, Council Busiaka. Okay. Kindly introduce yourself. Madam Speaker, Honorable Senate, my name is Dixon Monen in Kanata. Uh, I am the CC in charge of Legal Affairs, Public Service Management and Administration in the County Government of Meru. I am also an advocate by profession. Thank you, Mr. Munene. I'll refer to you as such. Starting from where you have stopped, indicate to, court, to, to this Honorable House, you've practiced law for how many years? Madam Speaker, Honorable Senators, this is my 11th year of practice as an advocate. I was admitted in 2014. My personal number is P10507 of 2014. Thank you. Senator Chiradike, what is your intervention? Madam Speaker, perhaps if you could freeze the time during the intervention. Your time is frozen any time there is an intervention. Uh, can you give the mic to Senator Chiradike? Uh, Madam Speaker, understanding 104 on the declaration of interest, uh, I don't know how will this one proceed because uh, Council Busieka and Council Monena and myself were in the same class. So is it in order the, the, that the Council and the witness should have declared the interest? before proceeding so that the House is cognizant of the fact. Uh, Senator Chadarike, I believe you must be out of order because many of us were in class with so many other senators and many other people who are appearing. Unless you have special interests like uh, being common shareholders within a company or other interests beyond going to school together, that's the only time you can then unless you have very serious interests that go into legal, proprietary, or other definable interests in law, that would then bring the team together in such a manner that they've been resolving issues in a way that would uh, uh, influence their judgment in these proceedings. Otherwise, if it's just going to class together, many, many people have been in school together. 
So I will overrule that objection. Or do you have any other interests you want to disclose beyond going to school together? I have overruled just attending the same school or the same class as a common interest that would cause uh, uh, influence the decision that should be made unless there is another special interest that then would influence the decision of the senator especially. What is your point of information? Senator Methu, is there another point of information which is relevant and will not take away our minutes? We have very short time. In, in fact, uh, Madam Speaker, because I know we are very constrained of time, uh, Senator Charage was selective and that's why he never referred and read the Standing Order 104. It is very specific that um, a senator who wishes to speak on any matter in which a senator has pecuniary or proprietary interest shall first declare the interest. So I don't think uh, going to school together is pecuniary or is proprietary. And I don't even think the witness before us is a senator. The standing order 104 is for a senator who wishes to speak on a matter. So the standing order that he quoted is irrelevant. I'm sure he just wanted us to know that he went to school with the brilliant fellas, but uh, that is now what under the bridge. Uh, thank you. Uh, though presumably it comes late after I had given a direction, but that suffices to close out that issue. Let's proceed on with the witness counsel. Mr. Munene, you saw an affidavit on 16th of August this year, correct? That is true. Would you wish to rely on the same as your evidence before this house? I would wish to rely on the same, Madam uh, Speaker, Honorable Senators. Okay. Now, the first issue is on as the subject of impeachment is on what we call illegal revocation of one CPA, Virginia Kawira. Did Virginia have the requisite qualifications at the point of appointment? Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Um, on the issue, uh, the governor has been accused of illegally revoking the appointment of a CPA, Virginia Kawira, Biriti as a secretary stroke CEO of the County Public Service Board. Um, I'm aware that um, I'm aware that the governor revoked the appointment of a CPA Virginia Karaoke, uh, uh, Kawira by virtue of the fact that um, she is still a public officer. Um, and this is an issue that offended subsection 50, uh, section 58 subsection 3B of the County Government Act. Um, it was an expectation that after the nomination and approval of CPA Virginia Kawera by the County Assembly, before she took an appointment, she should have resigned the, so that she doesn't own two offices and so that she qualifies um, by virtue of that section 58 3B of the County Government Act. Out um, of, sorry, I'm also aware that um, this decision of the governor was informed by the legal advice that she received, both from myself, um, with the background of um, law, being the CC in charge of uh, legal affairs, and the only CC who is an advocate by profession in that um, cabinet, and also from her legal advisor. Based on what you've just informed this house, you are aware that the legal advisor was before this house yesterday? Yes, Madam Speaker. I am aware that the legal advisor was before this um, um, house yesterday. Um, I'm aware that the legal advisor disowned the internal memo that is a, which is appearing on page 11 and 12 of the volume 1B of the governor's documents. Um, I'm also aware that um, um, 
the legal advisor, that is the former legal advisor, has since been, um, uh, employment has since been terminated by the governor. And um, I'm aware of the circumstances under which the termination of our employment was done. Um, I'm aware that there is a pending case between the legal advisor, the former legal advisor, and the governor in the Employment and Labor Relations Court. And I'm aware that um, the same former legal advisor is represented by the, the firm of Ngwele and Company Advocates, which is the same firm that is representing the county public, the, the CEO of the County Public Service Board, that is Virginia Kawira. I'm aware they share the same advocate. I'm aware that in the documents um, filed in court by the former legal advisor, the, um, the St. Virginia Kawira appears as the, as the um, uh, Linda Kiyome's witness. So I would not be surprised that um, Linda Kiyome would disown such an advice that she gave while still in office. Thank you. Will you confirm unequivocally whether she ever consulted you or shared with you this letter prior to tendering to Her Excellency the Governor? Yes, I confirm. I confirm that we discussed the issue. I confirm that um, she delivered the letter to myself when I, which I, I delivered it to the Governor. Yes, and I can confirm that uh, thereafter when uh, the governor deemed a letter of termination and the response, there was an advisory from um, the chairperson of the Meru County Public Service Bond in reference to that um, uh, revocation. Um, Linda Kiyome was not available to advise the governor on how to respond to such. I'm aware that um, we agreed that I look at the documents uh, since we have discussed over this issue, and I advise the governor on how to respond to the response from, the, from um, Julius Kainga Mitu, the County Public Service Board Chair. I'm aware that um, this, the governor did this letter between uh, pin 13 to that running 13, 14, and 15. Honorable, honorable senators, it's now 1 p.m., and I want first of all to notify the governor's team of their remaining time, which is one hour, 55 minutes, out of the total time of two hours, 40 minutes. Uh, this will be reflected in the supplementary order paper that will be printed for the afternoon session. The county assembly team will have one hour.